This is Cyberspud. Welcome to Inside Training Camp. I will teach you to play basketball. You wanna be a superstar? Got a gold glove, MVP, rookie of the year. Oh yeah, that's me. With the touchdown, rebound, alley. I'm a slam dunk champ hanging off the hoop. Run, run, run the quarterback throws the ball. I'm a slap that puck past all of y'all. I'm a work real hard and keep my game true. Yo, Tommy, tell them what they have to do to be superstars. My name's Tommy Havy. Lace up your shoes, get ready to throw down the rock, because I'm going to introduce you to basketball like you've always wanted to know it. What makes the difference in the amateur athlete and the professional? Are you born with those moves, or can you learn it? We're going to spend some time with one of the most dynamic players ever, Bud Webb. He played in the NBA for 12 seasons. And at 5'7", he was one of the most exciting players ever, as he showed when he won the NBA Slam Dunk Championship. Basketball. Yeah. What are y'all doing? Yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna work on dribbling today, all right? When you're dribbling, right? You always keep your head up, right? Yeah. Why you keep your head up when you're dribbling, huh? Uh, so you can see your opponent. So you can do what? See your opponent. That's right. And see who else? Your teammates. That's right. Cause you have to do what if you can see them? Pass. If you have your head down, you what? That's right. I am Cyber Spud. Triple ball. Use your fingertips. Keep your head up. Superstars in sports. Give me the ball. Yeah. You're dribbling. Keep your head up so you can see where you're going. All right, get over there. Always remember, right handed. We're gonna remember this. Dribble with your right hand. You keep your head up. Left hand. So you can see, even with both hands, even if you go behind your back, see? You can always dribble with, you, with your tip of your hand, you can control it, either way you want to go. Just the tip. All right, I used to get a chair, standing in front of a chair, and just dribble. You can't never take it away. I'm Charles Jones from the Los Angeles Clippers, and I'd like to talk to you today about ball handling. First, you like to keep the ball in the palm, not actually in the palm of your hand, you'd rather have it touch your fingertips, and you try to keep control. And dribbling is all rhythm, so once you just get the repetitions down and do what's comfortable to you. When you're learning to dribble, and you want to dribble with both hands, and you want to practice when there's no gym open and it's storming outside, what I used to do is get a chair, set it in the living room, and run my mother crazy is sit there and dribble with the chair, using the chair as a defender. Because when you play, you're going to always have a defender trying to steal a ball away from you. So I just try to get a chair and dribble in front of it as he's my defender, holding him off to uh, learn to dribble with my head up. See, you switch hands or you dribble around the chair. You know you got the defender right here. And that's, that's because you play against a lot of guys that are probably quick and long arms. You learn how to defend them off with a chair. Dribbling is one of the most important parts of the game, and you have to have the fundamentals to make it work. Because if you can't dribble, you can't see where your, your teammates are. What I recommend is when you, when you want to be a point guard, you have to learn how to dribble left or right-handed. And naturally, when you're dribbling, you have to keep your head up so you can see your teammates and see who's open. Because you don't want to have your shooter waiting if he's open, so always try to keep your head up. Get a, get a rhythm where you just pass, you just dribble in one spot. You just dribble in one spot and keep your head up. You're always looking around because you might have to call plays. You might have to see what the coaches want, and you might have to see if your teammates are open. But always try to keep your head up when you dribble. Just get a, get a, get a rhythm where you keep your head up. Well, you, you don't have to see the ball. If you've got to switch in, you still, you still have your head up. Dribbling and you see where you're going. Like I said, you're able to do it with your left hand and right hand because that's the way you have to be if you're going to be a good point guard. You have to call the plays, look at the coaches, and see if your teammates are open. So switching hands, you're still doing the same thing. Even if you're dribbling side by side, you still keep your head up because the defender on you 
he's going to be dropping at the ball. You got to be able to, if you make a pass, you make a pass. This is Tyrone Nez, LA Clippers. I'm talking to y'all about ball handling. Understand that when you got the ball, you can't let nobody take your rock because that's your rock. A lot of people understand that. So when you're coming down, you put your butt into them and you dribble back like this is so they won't steal the ball. That's the key of ball handling. This is your rock. Defend it. Dribbling a crossover is something that you have to learn if you're going to play basketball. I used to put up three chairs and dribble around them, left to right, left to right, right to left, because you have defenders in front of you. When the first defender to come, you're going this way. The next defender coming, you're crossing over, going that way. The next defender coming, you're going over that way. We gotta learn to pass the ball to each other, okay? Come on, let me see the ball. What are we gonna do? All right, you stand right there. You stand right there. You stand right there. We're gonna learn to pass the ball to each other. And this is the way you pass the ball to each other, all right? Not like this here, okay? All right, we're gonna pass it like that. Two hands. Yep, there we go. Pass it around. There we go. Two hands. Two hands. There we go. There we go. Thank you. That's the way you pass the ball to each other. You take one step forward, pass. Okay? Step forward, squeeze, chest pass. Simple as you read, that's why they call it the chest pass, because it comes straight from the chest. Step, chest pass. Follow through, just like a jump shot. Follow through. That's the easiest pass in basketball to most places, because you pass with one hand, you can't stop it with one hand, because you lose it. Two hands, you can stop. Chest, pass, step forward, squeeze, ball, pass, ball, step forward, squeeze, ball, pass, ball. Next, I'm going to talk about the bounce pass. Two handed chest pass with the bounce pass is when a defender is trying to make an interception. You can't intercept hardly a bounce pass because it's so low to the floor it's tough to reach down. It's the same step forward, chest, bounce, bounce. When you're making a bounce pass, you try to make it bounce up where you can grab it and shoot it without getting them off balance. So chest pass, step, bounce, bounces up to The big guys like these types of passes because they can time it and feel where uh, the ball is coming. Another key element of basketball is passing. Passing is very important. You know, when you pass the ball, you want to make sure your guy's open. A lot of people got fancy passes. My passes are more just basic. Yeah, <laughs> you my teammate. I, what happened if I throw a chest pass? Here, chest pass. He'll block it, right? So you throw a bounce pass up on it. On that's a bounce pass. That's why you throw a bounce pass. He can't get that. You saw he couldn't get that. So you got to play smart. Two hand chest pass when you have nobody to play with you can use the wall to bounce it back to you. I used to work on bouncing the ball at the, uh, against the house where you bounce against two-hand chest pass and come back to you. That's the way you learn the fundamentals of a crisp pass against the wall, making it bounce back to you. You step forward, squeeze, hit the backboard, make it bounce back to you. Same with a bounce pass, you do the same thing. Two hand, make it bounce back to you. That's where you learn a crisp pass and a bounce pass where you know where it's going to go. Step, bounce back to you. The great thing is you can just do it at home. Yeah, you do it at home. You don't have to ask nobody to catch and throw it back. So you just you can do it outside your house, at home, or wherever. Two hands. www.superstarsinsports.com If you want a closer and in-depth look into Superstars in Sports, the TV show, inside training camp videos, 3D training areas, 
Superstars Private Summer Camps. Pick up all your sports clothing, equipment, and memorabilia online. The latest sports news. Chat with your favorite athletes. Training tips. Pro and amateur team schedules. All of this at www.superstarsinsports.com. Let me show you how to shoot. The proper way to shoot, you put your air, your hand up under the ball, bending the elbow, and using your knees, okay? We don't want to just throw it up there. Stand right here. Stand right there. Come on, turn around. Yeah. Proper way. You put it under your hand like that there? Mm -hmm. you, you put it on your hand, use your elbow, shoot. All right? See, it goes in every time when you do it right. Okay? <laughs> Let me see. Bend them knees and shoot it. See that? Goes in every time when you do it right. It goes in every time when you do it right. Put hand under the ball. Bend, elbow, bend, knees. Shoot with an arc. The proper fundamentals is you bend your knees, you get the hand behind the ball, and you try to shoot at an arch. I always try to shoot and follow through. And shoot my shots. Follow through. Every time you follow through, you're aiming for the back of the rim instead of the front, because if you aim for the front of the rim, they always come up short. So I always try to get your hand behind the ball, you get a release in your knees, and trying to stay right in here. Don't try to ZV off and try to do your shot in any kind of way. Try to stay behind it, shoot, release at the top. Shoot. Hand behind and shoot at the top. Hi, I'm Eric Pryce, and I'll the Los Angeles Clippers. Today, I'd like to talk to you about shoot, 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 shooting. First of all, I think that most people understand that form and your technique is very, very important when it comes to shooting. And once you develop good form and technique, then you can start working on the other aspects of your shot. But when it comes to three point shooting with me, I feel as though one of the best things is to make sure that you're squared up to the basket and you're not leaning to the left, not leaning to the right, and you have great balance. Balance to me is the most important thing on my shot. When I have good balance, I hit my shot. So when I catch the ball, I always want to make sure to be in a three-point stance and be able to go straight up and straight down. When I have good balance, I go straight up and straight down, and I make a much, much higher percentage of my shots. I don't miss too many of good time. This is my... This is my... This is my bread and butter spot here. This is my made my little right here. This is my bread and butter spot. Aim for back of rim. Release with your knees. Practice good form. I like the rhythm. Do you want to be a superstar? Do you want to be a superstar? Oh, oh my God. Yep. Okay. But when you're at home, Tell me about what, how you would handle a jump shot for your practice or when you're just hanging out. Well, it's just like you're fiending for basketball. You sit there and watch guys play, and you want to practice your jump shot to get some kind of rhythm, and you just sit at home in a chair in front of the TV, practice on shooting it and, and releasing at the apex. It's flipping the wrist, finishing, getting the arc on the ball, so you just get a rhythm. Then when you come in the game, they say, how you take that jump shot? You say, well, I practice it. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. I am the man. I am Cyber Spy. One of the important things I want kids to know about is stretching. Is That's got to be an important factor in this game. Well, it's one of the most important factors because you can't start without stretching. Uh, before every game, even after game, sometimes you have to stretch because you get so tight. And uh, especially when you get up in age, you have to stretch a lot because the hamstrings, the, uh, the quads, the calves, and everything starts to go in wrong. But uh, if you stretch before before games, it give you a good warm up, uh, get the uh, muscles and tissues to working and get loose before you can just take out running.
And uh, if you don't stretch before you come out and play, you're going to pull a muscle. So I uh, always try to stretch before you go out and play. If you're one of the shooters, <laughs> you're stretching your, your elbow here. So because it can stretch all this up in here because you can all warm up. So it looks you, like you pulled on your elbow. Yeah, yeah you put, put your elbow your back and then you're pulling it, pulling it back. I Most see. of the time you get, you get with a, a, a partner and he can stretch you even better. Before games, we always partner up in uh, stretching. Okay. okay, so what would he push this? Yeah, you push part? it down. Okay. And just push the elbow down. Yeah, and that, that stretches both of y'all and then you can stretch all this up in here. So when you're taking shots and start running, you're already stretched out. If, you, if you're stretching stretching your legs, you always want to you always want to get down and, and your partner hold your leg up like that, and you're stretching. Right in here, you're stretching all that in there because if you take out running with with hamstrings, you you don't hurt everything. Let's go to the drawing board and learn positions and some fundamental plays. The first play we're gonna run is an offensive play and it's called a 22. The 22 is set up where you get a jump shot for the, the two guard, which is the shooting guard. So my point guard is the one, my shooting guard number two, my other forward, and my other shooting guard number three, and the center number five. What a point guard do is dribble down, the three man picks for the four to come out, and then the five man picks down for the shooting guard to come off the pick for a jump shot. And the point guard makes a pass to the two guard and he takes a shot. That's the shot we always use when we want to get our shooter a shot in an important situation. You have a point guard as the one, my shooting guard number two, my other forward, other shooting guard number three, and the center number five. What a point guard do is dribble down, the three man picks for the four to come out, and then the five man picks down for the shooting guard to come off the pick for a jump shot, and the point guard makes a pass to the two guard, and he takes a shot. That's the shot we always use when we want to get our shooter a shot in an important situation. You the best free throw shooter. Percentages always win, right? That's true. That's true. All right. So always when you're playing on the baseline, if a coach, if y'all in a defense, y'all have a defense where y'all take the guy baseline, or y'all have a defense where y'all take the guy middle, try to force him to the middle. Why did he take you to tell you to force him to the middle? Got it. All the help right there. But some guys, like big guys, you want to force baseline because the backboard is, is a defense and the baseline is a defense. But when you got a, sm a smaller guy that's real quick, you want him to the middle because all your help is in the middle, okay? So that's what I try to do is, is get down and they say force middle and you try to force him to the middle and because your help is there and he gonna, what are you going to do? Stop, pass, and then you rotate. If you got a big guy, maybe some guys like uh, uh, Derek, Derek Coleman, we used to try to force baseline because he was so good at going to the middle because of his quickness. So if you force him baseline, you know, you, you got help with the baseline and the, and the backboard. All right? Another offensive play we like to run is called a double fist. A double fist is when you have a point guard out front, which is the one. You have my three here, my shooter, and the four and the five. My two guard is going to pop. The one guard makes a pass and goes through to the corner to get out, open up for the double pick. The five, my center, and the four set a double pick on my three. He comes off. The two guard dribbles over and hits my three, which is my small forward, and he takes a shot. That's the way you get a shot if you have a small forward that has a hot hand. Point guard out front, which is the one. Guard number two. You have my three here, my shooter, and the four and the five. My two guard is going to pop. The one guard makes a pass and goes through to the corner to get out, open up for the double pick. The five, my center, and the four set a double pick on my three. He comes off. The two guard dribbles over and hits my three, which is my small forward, and he takes a shot. That's the way you get a shot if you have a small forward that has a hot hand. 
All right. First thing we want to do when playing defense, everybody knows is footwork is most of the whole deal. When, you, when you're playing defense, we're not watching the guy's eyes because you can be fooled watching the guy's eyes. I don't watch the ball that much when I'm playing defense. When I'm playing defense, I try to watch the guy's waist because in, when you're playing in the NBA, guys are so fast. If you're watching them in the eye, they'll fool you because they're so good with the ball, so you try to wear them in the waist. That's why they're taking away us holding people in the waist on defense because it's slowing everybody down and they want everybody not to hand check at all. So when you can't guard guys unless you can find out where their waist is. When you dribble, dribble. When you dribble, you find them on the waist so you know where they are because you're moving your feet side to side. Do it again. You move your feet side to side. When he come back, I can go with the other arm and I, I know where he is. I don't know if we have hand checking in, on, the, on, on the camps level and in, in high school level, but if you do it without the arm, this is, this is it. You definitely footwork this time, even both ways. See, I'm not watching, I'm watching the waist because hey, the body can't go nowhere without the waist, right? If I watch him in the eye, you watch him up there, you can be fooled. See, you watch him up there, you can be fooled. You got to watch him in the waist, in the waist. In the waist. In the waist. See, Blake can't go past me anyway. So, <laughs> next one. All right. He going to play defense on me, Blake. All right. All right. See how he's moving his feet? There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Next. Next, Blake, you dribble. He going to play defense. You play defense on him. Then we're going to switch it around. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, he, he, must, he must be a good defensive player. All right, next one. Go from line to line. You go. Yeah. There you go. Move them feet. There you go. Hey, anybody scoring the points on y'all this year? Yes, sir. All right. All right, that's good. You go to the line. He play offensive defense. Offensive defense. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, where you get that dribbling? You want to get that dribbling from, man? All right, that's good. You... All right, offense or defense? Let's see that D. What that D? Is that it? Is that it? There we go. That's good. That's good. All right, all right. Offense or defense? Came up. Offense or defense? There you go. All right, all right. All right, play defense with your eyes and your hands. Okay, you wouldn't go on the Duke, you slapping the floor. There you go, big man. That's a way to get down on it. All right, that's good. Offense or defense? Okay. Let me see them hands out. Let's see them hands out. There you go. There you go. There you go, that's good, that's good. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, all right, offense and defense. All right. Oh, you, oh, okay, there you go, there you go, there you go. All right, offense and defense, way to move the feet. There you go, there you go, there you go. All right, all right, all right. When you play defense, not only moving your feet, you have to know what a, what a guy does. You're, you're right-handed, right? right. Which side, if he's right handed, I'm gonna play this side, right? And try to guide him one way, cause that's his weakness. Going left, right? You can always control a person to take away their weakness. If I get on this side, he go by me fast, cause that's, that's his strong points. You have to play uh, smart when you play defense. Always play with your hands too. Cause that's what the best defensive players, you see Gary Payton and Mookie Blaylock, they lead the league in the score cause they always moving their hands, trying to confuse you, slapping at the ball, getting you out of your rhythm. So I always try to do that and have good form. Good form. You can't stand straight up and play defense. I love to see guys like that to stand straight up because, you know, you're going to score easy. So you have to get down with your hands always. And then take a shot, Blake. You got my hands down. See, you always try to bother them with a hand when they when they shoot. All right? Do it again and take a shot. Or get the next. Get the next. Okay. I can stop you. I need to stop somebody else. <laughs> you can't stop me either, Oh, yeah. <laughs> If you score on me, I'ma quit, see? see? See what I'm saying? See them hands? Another offensive play I like to have is for the point guard to take a quick shot or pass to the big man. It's called a one down. One down is simply a pick and roll between the one and the five, which is my center. I shoot a shooting guard 
in that corner, and I put a three man here, and I have my four over here. Otherwise, he's gonna come out, set a pick for the one man to come down the middle. If his man help, he passes to the three for the jump shot. If he get deep in the middle, he lays it up, or he take a quick pass to his shooter, which is a two guard for a three point play. It's a quick play where you get a lot of options from a point guard to make good decisions. Pick and roll between the one and the five, which is my center. I shoot a shooting guard in that corner. Gonna come out, set a pick for the one man to come down the middle. If his man help, he passes to the three for the jump shot. If he get deep in the middle, he lays it up, or he take a quick pass to a shooter, which is a two guard for a three point play. It's a quick play where you get a lot of options from a point guard to make good decisions. Dribbling, of court I'm delivering. Defense doubling up, but I ain't giving in. Pass the ball, pass back, and I attack 360. Throwing it down, it's like that. Summertime, break out the bases. Home run shots and 90 foot races. Just me and my team. Go rock the house and keep living the dream to be. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Got any tips for them they can do at home? Uh, any kind of drills when they're by themselves, maybe, that can help them with defense at all, you think? Well, the only thing you can work on by yourself is your footwork. You know, you, you, we used to do drills where we go drop step, drop step. You can't, you have to have good footwork. That's why, especially with point guards, because we had to pick up 100%, 100% whole court. You go, you drop, drop, drop. That's what you work on on defense. When you play guys as quick as the guys in the NBA, you got to learn how to drop step and, and uh, keep them in front of you, because else you'd be in the stands watching. So that, that's basically what you try to work on by yourself. But when you got somebody that you're working on one-on-one -on -one with, you try to keep them in front of your hand up always trying to bother the ball because we had guys like Tim Hardaway you couldn't stop the guy so you just try to put a hand up you get 30 points you know he didn't get his average so he averaged 31 okay in one shot <laughs> so uh, basically when mama comes home with the groceries and she's carrying them in you can just work oh yeah yeah you can work her. defense on her until she cook <laughs> 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 and then it's time to offense but uh, a lot of guys uh, uh, playing the NBA got now most guys are trying to pick up on their defense and uh you know, those are the guys that you respect. You know, Mitch Richmond used to score 25 points a game, but every time you look in the paper, his guy never scored. He'd get his average because he was, you know, had a defensive mentality that he wanted to stop people. And that's what you have to have in the NBA. That's you get, I mean, in college level, now you get embarrassed. So I always try to think defense and stopping your man. Teamwork is one of the most important things on having a basketball team. It's not just five players on the court, but all 12 players that are on the bench as well as on the floor. That's very key important to having a winning ball club. We learned some great tips today from Spud Webb. I hope you're going to take them home, practice, and keep learning them. I'm Tommy Havey for Superstars in Sports Inside Training Camp. Till next time, we'll see you later. You want to be a superstar? Dribbling, of court I'm delivering. Defense doubling up, but I ain't giving in. Pass the ball, pass back, and I attack 360. Throwing it down, it's like that. Just the guy made basketball. I remember him saying that? I said, well, I'm going to go and try. At least I can say I you know, went out and tried. And it was the first professional game I ever played. It's one I've seen I played in. Give me the ball! I've talked to kids about uh, uh, staying in school and and getting proper grades and discipline to go out and play. That's how I got started in basketball. You know, a couple guys didn't have the grades to play. And, you know, we guys played the first game. And, you know, I see those guys today, they were bigger and better than we were, but they can go out and get the proper grades to keep playing. I want to go shoot some shoot hoops out here with you in a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to change. Don't laugh. I know my golf game is bad. Wait till you see my basketball game. And I knew that if I wanted to play long, that I had to work on different aspects of my game to, to get better, even when I turned professional. I still went out and worked on different the game, parts of my game to make me better. Yeah. I am the man. I am Cyber Spud. Superstars in sports. Inside. Training camp.